Hi, this is Andy from GPS Training. In this video, we're going to show you how you can use our GPS Training free Ordnance Survey route planning software on a tablet that is compatible with a mouse and also it needs to be a tablet that's compatible with the Garmin Connect app because of a new feature that Garmin added in November 2021 to the Montana 700 750 series GPS devices and the GPS map 6686 series GPS devices, you can now send courses, which are very similar to a route, directly to your GPS device using Bluetooth and the Garmin Connect app. You didn't used to be able to do this with the Garmin Connect app with the handheld devices, but they've now added this feature to the Montana 700 750 and GPS map 6686 series. Now, GPS Training's free Ordnance Survey route planning software was predominantly designed to be used on a computer where you're using a hardwired connection to your GPS device. But we have found that as long as you've got a tablet that works with a mouse, um, a Bluetooth mouse, you can do the editing and quite happily use the software. And that means if you have got a tablet, then that's using Bluetooth and is compatible with Garmin Connect. Once you've created your course, on our route planning software, you can transfer it to the two GPS types that we mentioned using Garmin Connect. So I'm on using a iPad today. So it's one of the new generation iPads with a Bluetooth mouse. And I've went onto the homepage of our website, gpstraining.co.uk. It's a little gray circle you can see on the screen, which is my mouse moving around. So I'm just gonna move that onto the menu at the top and I'm just going to go on to OS Planner. So it's OS Planner, which is our free route planning software. And then I'm just going to use my finger on the screen of the iPad to move it down so we've got the map in view. So if I use the mouse, I can move the mouse to the go to box. And on the go to box, you can type in a place name. So as soon as I click with my Bluetooth mouse on the tablet, I get the keypad appear and I can simply type on the keypad somewhere that I want to search for. So I'm just going to type in a place name. So this is Mun Grisdale in the Lake District. I'm just using an example. And if I simply click on go or on your touch screen, you could touch on go. I then get a search results box that gives me the option of Mun Grisdale Cumbria or Mun Grisdale Common. So I could, again, I can either use my mouse since I've got a mouse connected or use the touch screen and select Mun Grisdale. The map is now moved to Mun Grisdale. Now to move the map around, you can either left click with your mouse and hold the left click of the mouse down and move the map around. Or what you can do is just put your finger, because if you've got a touch screen tablet, which I'm using here, I can use my finger on the screen to move the map around. To zoom in and out, you actually have a plus and minus at the top right of the screen. So if I move the cursor so you see this, little circle, grey circle, moving on the minus in the top right of the screen. And I'm using the left click of the mouse that I'm using. And as I zoom out, it changes to a 1 to 50 Land Ranger Ordnance Survey map. And as I click the plus to zoom in, the furthest you can zoom in is that level 9. It's now a 1 to 25 Ordnance Survey map. So that's how we zoom in and out. <clears throat> also, where you've got this toolbar along the top, if you want to hide it, there's a little arrow, white arrow pointing to the left and the top right of the map, just above the plus and minus of a left click on there. It hides the toolbar and to get the toolbar back, I simply left click on the GPS logo top left and it brings that back. So it's as simple as that, really. There's All we're looking at on here is moving the map around, zooming in and out using that plus and minus. And the fact you can use this search box as a go to. You can actually type a grid reference in there. So if you've got a UK grid reference, you can type in your first two letters of the grid reference. Um, you normally get your map sheet number. So an example could be NU. Um, you can see on the screen, you're actually in this little red box. I'll just hide the keypad a second. In the red box, it's got longitude and latitude, but it's also got NY. 366306, which is the grid reference um, for where the map's centered at the minute. So you can type the grid reference in that format. This is the Ordnance Survey um, grid reference in the search box and select go and it will center the map on a grid reference. So all I'm going to do now is actually plan 
a simple route and show you how you can download it to the downloads on your tablet so again i'm using an ipad today so it is ios i'm using today we are going to do a video showing a mouse connected to an android device um it's actually a phone but it could be an android tablet again as long as it's compatible with a bluetooth mouse and compatible with garmin connect you'll be able to do exactly the same as what we're doing on this new generation ipad today so just to show you how we simply do a route i'm just going to zoom out a little bit and I'm just going to move the map by putting my finger on the screen. You've got to be careful you don't accidentally tap on the screen, otherwise that actually starts your route creation. So I know you can't see me doing this on the video, but if I just tap with my finger on the screen, there's a little blue dot appeared in the sort of middle of the screen. And the top left of the map, you can now see where it says your route. So if you accidentally see that happen and you didn't mean to start your route, you simply move the cursor of your mouse to the little a grey cross where it says your route to the right of your route and left click on there and it will close it down so you just got to be careful when you're moving the map you don't tap too hard but when you're ready to go i'm going to use my mouse since i've got the bluetooth mouse connected and i'm just going to left click next to the phone box icon to the right of the map and then you see that route box appear and i'm just going to left click where the footpath i'm looking at the green dotted line of the footpath where it slightly changes direction and again, I can just click it. You've got a maximum number of points with the new range GPS devices, which is 250. So as long as you don't mark more than 250 points. And you actually see in this box that appears, if I use my finger and actually just scroll up by touching the box, it's showing you that I've got 12 points at the moment. So it shows you how many points you're adding. So again, I'm just clicking with the mouse and then I'm going to move the map just gently using my finger and move it across the screen. I'll just add one more point. So that's just the basics of planning a route by simply clicking on top of the footpath where you want to mark your points. Try not to put too many points and you don't have to do every little turn. Um, but I've got 18 points marked there and you see in this your route box, I'm just using my finger up and down to scroll up and down it. It actually gives you the length in miles and kilometers, gives me the ascent and it actually uses the Naismith rule to work out roughly how long it should take me to walk this route. If I've got a bit in the wrong place or a bit I don't want, where you see the little blue wording delete next to each of these numbered points in the Your Route box, if I simply touch on where it's got number 18 and the 644 metres, which is the elevation, if I touch on delete and then just keep hitting delete, it deletes out the points that you've marked. So that's how you can delete points out. And then simply if I move the cursor and left click once more, it puts that point back in on the map. Now, if you want to edit the route, all you've got to do is move the cursor with your mouse onto one of the little circles that you can see that are these sort of what I would call via points that make up your route. And then once you're over the point, you just hold the left click of your mouse down. Just do that again. Sorry, I've actually added a point by mistake at the end. So I'm just going to delete that one out. So I'll just touch on the delete and delete again just no, I've went too far so I'll just add that back in so I'll do that again so to move it's just a left click on the point and then you drag and let go so one don't hold the left click down that was my mistake it's just a single left click drag if you do do that you've just got to come off it by touching on the map if you get that screen come up where you accidentally get that box so just a gentle left click move and let go and I'll just move those points back onto the route so it's just moving the cursor over the dot one single click and then you just move with the left click held down gently. You just move your mouse to adjust the route. So that's how you can edit your route. Um, if you've made a mistake and you want to line it up a little bit better. When you're ready to go and you want to save the route, you simply scroll down on that your route box. I'm just using my finger on the screen. I find that easier on them um, when I want to scroll down. And you can see it's got the wording download GPX. So if I touch on download GPX, that will download it. One thing I forgot to mention, just at the top of your route box where it's got the distances, etc. In blue wording, it's got the option of view profile. If I touch on view profile, you get an elevation profile box appear on the map. And to close that down, you just touch on the little cross or move your cursor with the mouse onto the cross. So if I just scroll down to the bottom of this box where it says download GPX, so I'm just going to touch on download GPX and then it says, do you want to download? Now it says new route. That's because I haven't given it a name. So I'm just going to close that down a second. And what I should have done 
is renamed it so where it says name at the top and it says new route i'm now just going to move my cursor in there and click in there and just hit the backspace i should have given this a name so i'm just going to call it bow scale fell that was my fault so on the ipad it's nice when you click on that box a text box on the map page the keypad automatically comes up and then on an ipad you've got that icon at the very bottom right of your keypad that looks like a keypad if i touch on there it now hides the keypad so this route now when i scroll down to the bottom of the your root box and touch on download gpx you can see now it's got the proper name bow scale fell gpx so if i touch on download that goes to the downloads on my ipad now when you download on an ipad you actually get the top of the screen there's actually a blue down arrow with a circle that's showing you where my downloads are so if i touch on that arrow at the top it shows you downloads that i've done so if i look at that one i've just downloaded that says bow scale fell or if you obviously you'll know your own ipad you find the folder in your ipad called downloads so if i touch on bow scale fell now it opens it up with a load of text which obviously isn't going to help me but you'll see in the top right of the screen i'm just going to move my cursor to the top right there's a blue square with an arrow up if you click on that you then get the option to open the bow scale fell with garmin connect so you do need garmin connect to be on your ipad and set up with your garmin account and paired with your gps device so those you um you're using our online training resource that you get for free for a year when you buy a gps device from us the online training resource that you log on to from the home page of our website under online resource for the montana 700 under module module 13 we have the videos on how you pair your montana 700 with garmin connect and get garmin connect set up and for the gps map 66 under the courses um garmin units and gps map 66 on that online training course module 11 shows you how to um pair with garmin connect so once you've done that what i'm now going to do is use this little arrow up on the top right of the screen touch on that and it gives me the options of what i want to open the gpx file with so i'm going to select garmin connect and then my garmin connect will open and then asks me what type of route it is now i know it doesn't have the option of hiking so you could just select other it, it doesn't really matter at this stage what you select i could select trail running but if i just select other there it now shows you the basics of my route on the screen and if i scroll down I can see the elevation but you'll see the course name it's just given it a generic name so where it says course name i'm going to touch on there and just use the little back arrow to delete the name and give it a proper name so it does rename it for some reason even though i called it bow scale fell on the download so i'm just going to rename this bow scale fell and then hit the return that's that done hit the little blue back arrow next to course name and you'll see that's now bow scale fell and if I just touch on save in the top right, and I'm just going to leave this private, I'm not sharing it with anyone else via my Garmin Connect app. That's now saved as a course. And you see the three blue dots at the top of the Garmin Connect app. If I touch on those, I get the option send to device. And as long as you've got your GPS device turned on and you have paired it with the Garmin Connect app, as per our videos on the online resource that I mentioned earlier, I just simply say send to device. It shows my GPS map 86i connected, so I'm just going to touch on that and it says ready to go. And basically once that Garmin Connect app syncs with my GPS device, that course will be on my GPS. So what I can do is with a little blue arrow in the top left of where it says bow scale fell, if I just come out of there to come back, you can see there it lists all the courses that I've already sent to my unit. Uh, sorry, sent to Garmin Connect. I'm just going to hit the little arrow again. Now, what I find useful, you can see now in the top of the screen, it's got a little circle with a picture of a GPS in and a green dot. That's telling you my GPS is connected. But where it's got the two blue circular arrows to the right of that symbol, if I touch on those, it will force the sync just to make sure that it is syncing. So sometimes you find you have to do that a couple of times and then you've seen the green circle go around the GPS. So now if I go to my GPS device, and use the find button on the push button unit and select courses because it'll be on your device as a course rather than a route and it's the same on the montana 700 750 series you use the magnifying glass which is the search and then you select the new option called courses and that course will be on your unit 
Now, what I have found quite useful on Garmin Connect, so you can find your courses quickly if you need to resend them, along the bottom of the screen where I've got the little shortcut icons, there's an option that says more on the Garmin Connect app. Again, this is on the iOS device I'm using. If I touch on more, and you can see here, if I just scroll down, um, just going to find it here. We've got the options that I've got here, um, activities, health stats, performance stats, etc. I want to add courses as a shortcut to the bottom. So what I can do is touch on the edit and you see when I touch edit, it shows you the shortcuts on my day. And if I look at the bottom where it says courses with a little plus, if I touch on that now, the little plus symbol next to courses, it's telling me I've got too many features. So I'm just going to remove the one by hitting the little minus next to news feed and then touch on the one that says courses with a little plus. I've now got the courses appear. And if I touch on save now, you'll see along the bottom of the app now I have this courses icon. It just makes it a bit easier to find another course. So if you had another one you'd already sent to Garmin Connect but hadn't sent to your GPS. So I'll pick this one called Three Quires Way. Again, I then just simply touch on the three blue dots at the top and say send to device and do exactly the same as what I did before. 86i and then I sync it. So I come little blue arrow to come back out. Little bottom of the screen where it says my day, I'm just going to touch back on there. I could see that's automatically synced at the top, but if it hadn't, I could just touch on those two blue arrows again. So I hope you found this video useful on using your um, our free Ordnance Survey route planning software on an iPad that is compatible with a Bluetooth mouse and also the Garmin Connect app. Please have a look at the online resource on the videos that go into more detail on using Garmin Connect with the GPS devices. I know some customers have used our route planning software without a mouse, but you will find it quite hard to do the editing. So it is better if you can pair a Bluetooth mouse with your iPad tablet. And thanks for watching.